afternoon. We are gathered here today by loss and by love. We are brought together by the shared human experiences of grief and gratitude. 
We are gathered because of the death of a woman, but even more, we are here because of her life and the ways that her life has touched our lives. Julie Millen Gardner was a daughter, a mother, a sister, a cousin, and a niece. She was a horseback rider, a dog trainer, and caregiver to animals throughout her life. Julie was a defender of animals, and she was a friend, a loving, lively, musical, and helpful friend. It was a shock when Julie died, tragically, earlier this year, and it remains a cause of deep sadness. She was 58 years old when she died, way too young to be taken from those who knew her and loved her. Too young to be taken from the life which she endeavored to live with passion. On this occasion of sadness and remembrance, our hearts are connected with love and with care. We are connected by gratitude for the special moments of life with Julie and appreciation of the passion that she brought to life. So together on this day, we remember Julie's life and remember how she shared that life with others. And in doing so, we say goodbye. In this time together, let us all share comfort with one another. And together, may we share the help and strength to move into the days before us with grace and care. Thank you for being here as we do this. If you are here in person, we hope you will stay after the service for a reception that the family is hosting on the patio. Also, if you're here in person, you may want to take this time to turn off your cell phone or turn it to silent mode. If you are participating by Zoom, we hope that you will post your remembrances of Julie using the chat feature. You can do that at any time, but there will be a particular time in the service when people here will be invited to share brief memories and anecdotes and you can type them into the chat and then we will print out the text from the chat and provide it to the family after the service. Thanks for being here. Next, we will hear a reading selected by Julie's family and read by Carl Gardner. Roger. <clears throat> In the days <clears throat> following, we have the time to learn Julie's death. <clears throat> Julie's mother, Sue, sent a number of poems via email. And this is one of them. It's called The Little Soul. It's by Ken Kelly Dickinson. Wrap my soul in lemon balm. Cover me in sage. Steadfast is my spirit. Kindness is my age. I am the beauty of the dawn. Brilliant beams of light. Carousels of cotton clouds, a gift to chase the night. Follow me down daisy trails, lightly skipping buds of white, singing softly in the flow of fragrant fair delight. Dance with me under the moon, undulating swirls of grace. The melancholy midnight sky will hide my fairy face. Travel with me throughout time. Feeling in the trees. Catch me in a fallen star or smell me in the breeze. I am the essence of Earth's perfume, eternal hearts proclaim, the embodiment of beauty's charm. Julie was born in Los Angeles on the 2nd of November of 1963. She died on the 4th of January, 2022. 
She leaves behind her parents, Sue and Robert Sutton, her son, Cole, her sister, Lori, and their half-sister, June, her former husband, Carl, and many other family members and friends. She died unexpectedly from an accident at home on the 4th of January, just two months after turning 58. It is tragic that she died this way and so young. It is heartbreaking that she experienced so much inner turmoil in the past two decades. Along with Julie's pain came, unfortunately, isolation, which is often a burden of the disease of addiction. It is not unusual for a person struggling, as Julie struggled, to be reluctant to ask for help, to hide how badly things are going, or to reveal or to not reveal how bad she feels. For those close to her, Julie's turmoil could sometimes generate frustration and hurt, though her behaviors and words no doubt cause even more harm to Julie herself. Given the inevitable sadness of a time like this, I think a few things are important for all of us to try to do. One is to hold the person we have lost with honesty and with compassion. Likewise, we can hold ourselves with honesty and compassion. We can make space in our hearts and minds to hold the unanswered questions, to hold the unanswered questions gently, to let it be okay that there are no clear answers to our questions. Grief and healing from loss don't need tidy answers. Grief and healing need only patience, tenderness, and care. In the wake of this loss, it is natural that everyone will have complicated feelings. And given the complications of grieving, it can be helpful to give ourselves and give one another the patience and the space and time to let understanding emerge gradually. At the same time, it is important to remember that a person's emotional struggles do not define all that they are or all that they have been to those who love them. Hence, we celebrate the rich life that Julie enjoyed, and we honor the ways that she touched others. Everyone's life is a rich picture, full of stories and connections and relationships and music. Here are a few scenes from Julie's life. Julie was born in Los Angeles. Her parents divorced, but she and her sister, Lori, were young. Both parents later remarried. Her father, Terry Millen, passed away when Julie and Lori were in their early 20s. Later, the family moved to South Carolina, where they lived in a house far from the road. They would walk the long driveway to catch the school bus for school. Julie loved caring for horses and riding horses and was able to have one there on the property at home. After high school graduation, Julie went to Santa Cruz for a few years and worked before going to college up at San Francisco State University. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1987. Later, she completed 30 graduate units in adult education at the same university. She began a relationship with Carl Gardner, another college student. Five years later, they married. In 1991, they lived in the Bay Area for several years. They moved to Sacramento in 1999 when Julie was expected. Cole was born the same year. Later, Carl and Julie's marriage would end with divorce, but both of them continued to live in Sacramento and the parent of their son. Their son, Cole, told me about spending time as a child and youth with his mom as they walked her dogs together. And when he was 12 or 13 on Friday nights, they would rent a movie and watch it together over a pizza. His mom introduced him to horseback riding. Although reluctant to take lessons at the time, he told me that he now looks back on it with gratitude. 
A working life over the years often was involved with serving others. Near Santa Cruz, Julie worked. The working life over the years often was involved with serving others. Near Santa Cruz, she worked in a retail clothing boutique where she was the right hand to the owner. She was a food server and a job placement representative for a temporary agency. As an administrative assistant for the De Leon artists, she booked shows for jazz artists. As an administrative assistant at the UMC SF Medical Center, she has provided executive level support to the director of nursing. At the UCSF School of Nursing, she supported faculty and staff in an innovative new graduate nursing program. And reflecting her devotion to animals, especially to dogs, she was the owner of a dog boarding and training business that she named Bed, Biscuits, and Better Manners. Of course, any work that involves training or caring for pets includes the complex aspect of also tending to and caring for the human beings involved and implicitly training them to be better pet owners. Among other professional affiliations, Julie was a member of the Association of Pet Dog Trainers and Therapy Dogs International. In the recent past, working through an outsourcing business, she represented covered California as a customer service representative on the telephone. The sister Lori recalled that Julie was again in a helping role, guiding people to get access to health care and health insurance. Trying to help seemed to be a calling for her, a passion perhaps. Another passion was music. Julie enjoyed live music a lot blues especially. She befriended other fans as well as members of bands that she enjoyed. Though Julie had been shy as a young person, in recent years she had a wide variety of friends and became very social. Her friends joined in grieving this loss and in celebrating her life. Everyone here has had a unique relationship with Julie, and everyone will grieve and heal in particular ways. Yet as a community of those who share this loss, there are some things we all can do to honor Julie and celebrate her life. As we celebrate the ways that she enjoyed life, we can honor her by choosing ways to bring joy to our lives and share it with other people. As we celebrate Julie's care and commitment to helping other people and other creatures, we can honor her by remembering to show kindness and be of help to others. And please let us be sure to reach out when we need help from others, remembering that it honors them to be trusted with our honesty and our lives as fragile human beings. As we pray for Julie to receive the gift of inner peace and to rest in peace, we can honor her by asking for that same gift of peace to touch our lives in the days to come. So may it be. Now please join me in the spirit of gratitude and intention as I offer these words of prayer for our meditation and that will be followed by a brief time of silence and after that some music. Now you may wish to relax your eyes, whether open or closed. Notice your body in your seat, your feet where they might be resting. Notice where you are. Notice your breathing in and out. Notice your neighbor's breathing. 
our common breath, which is the breath of life. O Spirit of life and of love, we give thanks for the gift of life and the blessing of these moments together as we share comfort and care with one another. We acknowledge our sadness and our shock at the loss of Julie, a person whose passionate presence, enthusiasm, and care can make it hard to believe she is gone. At the same time, we acknowledge our gratitude for all the blessings she brought into life. We give thanks for her gifts of service and care, affection and humor, enthusiasm and friendship. As we grieve her death, we grieve the turmoil and pain which plagued so much of her experience of life. Knowing the elusive nature of serenity and peace in her life, we pray for Julie to rest in After too much pain, may she be held in love and comfort and joy, which are abundant. As we consider her passing and reflect on our shared mortality, help us to count our blessings every day we live. Help us to give thanks for every good gift. In this time of sadness, let us find courage to fill our days with patience, with gestures of mutual care, and with words of kindness. So may it be. Now let's take some time of silence together for our own prayers and quiet meditation. Julie and I have been married for about 14 years, almost 14 years, and we were in a relationship for four years before that. We met in 1987 as sociology majors in San, at San Francisco State, and then over the next 12 years, we moved progressively northwards through San Anselmo to Pelham and finally to Sacramento in 1999. While we were together, Julie received her Bachelor of Arts degree and all but completed a master's. With her support, I also received my bachelor's as well as a law degree. When our son Cole was born in 1999, he, he joined an already full household, an established household that included two dogs, two cats, and a rabbit. <laughs> all this is just to say that although we separated in 2005 for a significant period in her life, I knew Julie pretty well. Julie and I have good friends, 
and good times for much of our relationship, but as you might expect from the way it ended, we also had hard times. Like a lot of young people, money was a chronic issue for us, and a frequent source of stress. When we left Petaluma for Sacramento, it's in large part to escape my deteriorating job situation and the fear we are just never going to catch up to the cost of living in the Bay Area or, or Sonoma County. It was in July 1999. We were in search of a home. The Sacramento Valley was hot and filled with wildfire smoke. And Julie was eight months pregnant. I can't remember a more acute and stressful time in my life, and I know it was very hard in that as well. I believe that Julie was, was very sensitive emotionally, and I, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. What I mean by it is that she wore her heart on her sleeve. I think she had to. She knew joy, love, and happiness in very authentic and immersive ways, but there was also a part of her that was attuned to pain, and anger, and fear in ways that were at times difficult for us to get on. I think I can be that way too. <clears throat> but we're, whereas Julie, by nature, spoke her mind, my tendency is to suppress difficult emotions and try to move past them as though they don't really matter. I'm afraid that as we try to navigate our way through the hazards of our younger lives at different schools, and a source of lasting damage for our relationship. There's a lot that I don't know about Julie after we separated and most of the people in this room. Perhaps you don't know her or remember the room the way that I described. But I think that Julie remained an emotionally expressive person, and it's that presence that was the source of what I'd really like to remember about her. Julie had a strong sense of fairness and could be fearless when it came to speaking up. She would stick up for those close to her, including me, her friends, and especially Cole. It was the same when Julie saw an animal in need of care or protection. She was not afraid of being confrontational, even with those she cared for. Julie and I have a very similar sense of humor. She had an instinctive, instinctive recognition of the ridiculous and the absurd, and she could be joyfully silly and irreverent about it. There were many, many times when she and I laughed ourselves to tears, just us, but with our friends, at the foolishness of the world and people in it. In those moments, our cares, her cares, fell away. Julie's love for animals is perhaps what most defines her in my mind. She's a lifelong vegetarian, and I believe she's compelled to be so by the innate cruelty of taking innocent life to some wire tables. In my memory, she always shared her life with dogs, cats, rabbits, a horse. And we had any number of stray dogs come through our house on the ways, on their ways to better life. I'm sure nearly everyone in this room knew of her love for Belgian children dogs, most recently Pippa and Ruby. Julie's love of animals was an expression of her high capacity for caring and kindness. The last thing I want to say about Julie is the most important. She has a son. With her care and love, Cole has grown <clears throat> and continues to grow into an honorable and capable young man, making both his parents proud. For all of us, Julie has gone much too soon, but especially for Cole. Cole, your mother loved you dearly. Remember the love of her. 
and don't fear the sorrow of her loss. Welcome her when she visits your dreams and your thoughts and your heart. And don't be afraid to let her go at the end of those moments. Because her love will always come back to you. It's in you. Everything that is good in your mother is in you. Her love is in you. It will always be there. The secret, your first breath, the breath of life that allowed you to stay here on earth, allowing you to know God's most sacred hiding place. The secret revealed to every breath, every heartbeat. Inhale deeply, let God in. Exhale slowly and fill this planet with love. Knowing that the secret will be revealed on your last breath. The breath that allows you to stand at the portal of the infinite, unafraid and knowing that the beloved is in everything. So lean closer and take comfort as God whispers. Death is not. There is no death. Only the constant dissolving into the infinite of never ending wonderment. Only the constant dissolving into the infinite of never ending wonderment. Only the constant dissolving into the infinite of never ending.
So this is the time if you have a brief memory, brief words of appreciation about Julie uh, to share it with uh, the gathering here and on Zoom. Uh, if you're here in the room, uh, it's best if you come up here uh, to use the mic so you can be seen. But if you need me to bring the mic to you, I can also do that. And if you're participating on Zoom, if you would type your uh, appreciations uh, and uh, um, memories of Julie in the chat, then we will have that for later. No. My name is Sally Caden. I'm the president of the Sacramento Blues Society. And Julie was not only a member of the Blues Society, but she was a member of a music lover. I mean, she loved her music. I'd run into her at all the different locations from the powerhouse to the Torch Club to Arlo's. She always has a kind of word. I mean, if I walked in late, she'd come up and give me the lowdown and let me know what was going on. But she never did not acknowledge you. She was a kind person. She had lots of friends, and we're all going to miss her. My name is Richard Worrell, and uh, I met Julie at the uh, services for Kim Duvall when she was deeply touched with the passing of, and uh, somehow we just sparked a Facebook rapport with each other, and uh, I show a kind of corso, which is an Italian mastiff, she showed her Belgian interference. Gave me advice that I shouldn't be feeding Momo once a day. I should be feeding her twice a day. Uh, submit to those pleading eyes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I'm one of those, I like to control the narrative. My dog is like, yeah, good luck with that. And um, she was just a wonderful spirit, as all of us would know, in our individual ways. She touched my life as a friend. Um, she was a fellow music lover. Uh, fun to dance with, a uh, very uh, spontaneous spirit, and also a person that had her inner turmoil, as Carl expressed. But she and I shared a lot of things along this similar line from divorce and, and other travails of relationship difficulties. And I have great empathy for what you've expressed and uh, shared with us. And I just want to share that. Thank you all for sharing the fellowship with her you know, gift to our, our lives and our friendship. Mm -hmm. I'm Barbara Caton, Sally's cousin, and I'm vice president of the Blue Society. And I wish I knew Julie better. Um, all I can say is that in my dealings with she was a lovely lady. And uh, we had, we both got moms, and so we had that in common. And the last time I saw her was at the Blue Society um, membership party. In December, and that smile can light up a room, and she will be missed. Thank <laughs> you. 
thing. Each and every one of you for being here today. You all meant a lot to her. So, meant a lot to all of us. A few years ago, uh, she was really going through it. And she just made the decision to turn things around, started going out, meeting all of you. And uh, this really, really helped her out. We're very positive things in the world. I've been up here too much already, but I just want to echo what Cole said. I'm really glad that she really failed. Sacramento, it was a tough. It was tough for us to come here, um, but it's a good thing to have a home. Thank you for it. Sure. This is a poem entitled Prayer for the Dead by H. Byron Ballard, which was provided by Julius Gatlin. You have come to the end of this pathway in a journey to which we bear witness. You have come to the end of a pathway that is barred with a gate and a door. May this door open swiftly and silently. May this gate give you a moment's grace in which to rest your spirit before you venture through. We stand here with you as your companions, as your family, for you are beloved. But for now, we must remain here. We cannot go with you to this old land, not yet. For you will see the ancestors you will see the beloved dead. You will walk among divine beings that guide and nurture us all. You will go to dwell in the lands of summer and of apples, where we dance forever useful, forever free. We can hear the music in the mist, the drums that echo our sad hearts. We can see your bright eyes and your smile. And so we open the gate. We push back the door. We hold the gate open. We glance through the doorway. And with love and grief and wonder, we watch you walk through. Hail the traveler. All those remembered in love, in honor, Live on. Farewell, O oh best love. O oh fairest, farewell. We will mention if you're here and you join us for the reception, there will be a place to write down your memories um, in a book. And we'll include those that are posted in the chat. Now, in the spirit of saying farewell and letting go, please join me in the spirit of a shared blessing as I offer these words of prayer. O oh, spirit of love everlasting, touch us all with comfort and with strength now and in the days to come. We give our thanks for this time together. In these times of deep sadness, we are grateful for the love and care we feel from one another. We give thanks for Julie, for all that she brought to life, and for having shared this life with her. As we let her go, we hold on to the memories that endure to provide meaning to our days. May the days to come bring to us a greater understanding of ourselves, of one another, and of life itself. 
remembering her gifts of care, kindness, service, humor, and friendship. We lift our hearts in gratitude for Julie. Now, in these moments, we say farewell to Julie. We let her go into the arms of eternity, where the living and the dead of all the ages join as one human family. We entrust her to the spirit of life, which will never let us go. We entrust her to the source of love, which sustains us, holds us, and connects us, all of us, forever. So many people. Thank you for coming here in person and for being here online. As we prepare to move into the rest of this day and into the rest of our lives, let us resolve to bring the best of ourselves into the living of our lives, to bless one another with kindness and to bring peace, compassion, and love into this world. And as we go, may the radiance of memory, the fellowship of community, and the warmth of love be ours now and in the days to come. So many things. Amen. Bless you. Thank you.